What's up? This is Tom Froming, and today we're going to talk about my updated Minnesota Twins prospect list. This is basically entering June here, um, and there are a lot of guys, you know, from the most recent draft. There's a lot of guys from uh, last year who are in short season ball, who are in full season ball this year that are moving around. Um, so quite a few updates. You know, there's a lot of guys that we didn't have a lot of information on coming into this year that we do now. Um, so I'm going to be sharing those with you, um, you know, and had to move some stuff around today because uh, one of my kids is sick. Uh, but that opened up the door for this. So might as well uh, knock this out and have some fun today with this. Um, but before I get into today's update, um, I did update my list on April 24th. I did not do a video on it. Didn't get around to that. Um, but just a quick scroll through on those updates and just want to point out uh, before we really crack into um, the current list, um, some of the adjustments, because some of these guys have graduated from prospect status. But as you can see here, there wasn't really a whole lot of movement going on. Uh, it was mostly moving, again, some of the guys we didn't have a lot of information on up uh, once we uh, started to see more of them, get some more reports on them, uh, but nothing too huge you know, so early there. Now we have almost two months worth of work. Oh, I don't want to give everything away there. Hold on. <laughs> uh, but again, I wanted to point out the guys at the bottom here, Joe Ryan, Josh Weiner, and Yuan Duran have graduated from prospect status. Uh, Joe Ryan due to innings and service time. Duran due to service time. Um, if, you have, if you're have, you on the active roster for 45 days, you know, it doesn't matter how many innings, how many plate appearances you have. Uh, you would no longer have prospect status. Um, and then Josh Winder is kind of up for debate right now. He, I think he's very close to that 45 days on active. I think he was around 42. So he might technically, as of right now, have prospect status. But as soon as like the day after he comes back or something like that, he will no longer be a prospect eligible. So let's I figured let's just take him off now um, and work with this here. And the other, the other two guys, Misael Urbina and Kalai Rosario, dropped out. They were in my last top 30, and they have now dropped out. Um, you know, clearly, clearly a couple of the guys that are right there. And that's kind of a good segue just to talk about um, the bottom tier that I have. And I did put these in tiers. So you see from 30 to 27, Junior Severino, Noah Cardenas, Brian Medina, and Brent Hedrick are all in the final tier there. Um, and then how, the way I have this is, of course, this is the rank, their name, their position, the level they're currently at, and where they were at on the last list I did, and then the change from this list. So you see Brent Hedrick enters the list. Noah Cardenas enters the list from being not ranked last time. But really in this last tier, you know, you can see uh, the guys that fell off, Urbina or Rosario, are in this same tier, really. There's probably 10 more guys that are in this same tier that were under consideration uh, for the list. Uh, but moving on up, won't spend too much time on the bottom of this list. Um, a couple more additions, uh, Sawyer Gibson Long, Travis Adams, and Alex Isola come in at the back of this list. Um, you know, some, some recent draftees, some guys that have been playing better. Um, and then, you know, a couple of the top picks from the 2020 draft still hanging around here. Um, I don't think there's any reason to totally give up on these guys, but having Sabato and Solare so low on this list kind of gives you the indication Compared to their draft status, how, how their kind of stock has fallen. Uh, the next tier is uh, David Festa, who, you know, is probably the biggest pop-up prospect of 2022 so far for the Twins. A 13th round pick, been talking about him a ton. Finally getting to show him some, um, some highlights on the nightly recaps. Um, and then Keone Kavako is another kind of former high for, you know, first round pick who's, you know, Barely in my top 20 hanging in there. I know a lot of people have dropped him off. Um, but I still see a lot of reason to be, you know, maybe optimistic. Not enough to, you know, this isn't very high ranking for a guy with this kind of a, a draft status. So still not really uh, totally buying in, but I'm still not fading him completely. And then Steve Hadger and Blaine Enlow. Great to see Blaine Enlow back on the mound uh, this year and healthy. A guy who definitely could move up. Um, Hadger, I, I considered higher, but he's been walking a few two guys and his last outing was tremendous though. Uh, you can find, and I should mention, I should have mentioned this already, but we're not going to have highlights in this video, but we highlight these guys basically every night. I have a video that's showing the, all the minor league highlights of the day. So if you want to see these guys out in the field, um, I can help you do that within, you know, 
five minute videos pretty much every day. Give me, give me five minutes of your time and I'll keep you pretty, pretty up to date on the system. Um, the next tier here gets a little bigger, uh, going from Matt Wallner up to Ronnie Henriquez. Uh, and some guys that have struggled in here and some guys that are injured. See Walner, Encarnacion, Strand, Julian, Steer, Varland, Sands, and Henriquez. Um, you know, Walner's the guy who I had had much higher before, and I'm really encouraged to see him hitting in May, but I kind of had faded him earlier this year um, because the strikeouts are concerning to me. I think that really limits his ceiling, but he's a great power hitter and on a great tear. It's been really fun to see him turn it up. Uh, Encarnacion and Strand, I would put higher if I wasn't concerned about his defense. I think he has 10 errors already this season at third base. Um, so not a really lock to you know be a, a staying there, I think, at this point. Um, so hopefully he kind of can round out you know that uh, issue. But there's no question about the bat. He's cooled off some from April, but, I mean, he's hitting like 400 <laughs> in April. So just ridiculous there. Um, Edward Julian, unfortunately, he spent a lot of this year injured. Uh, and I have him listed at second because they kind of had him settle in there this year. But he's played all over the place uh, last year, first base, third base, outfield. Um, so he might be a guy that moves around some. Um, Steer, I've always been a little bit lower on Spencer Steer, but I, can't, I, could, I couldn't keep him down for much longer. You see, I moved him up 10 spots from the last ranking at 24. I think his upside is somewhat limited, but we're we're seeing, you know, He's really he's produced every step of the way. Um, to be honest, he just he didn't really capture um, a lot of excitement from me at the time of the draft. So I've kind of always had him a bit lower. So that sort of slowed him going up my list. Uh, but he keeps checking boxes, you know. And I think most people will have him higher than I do. And I think that's completely reasonable. You know, I think it's uh, perfectly. Uh, reasonable to have him in the top 10 Spencer steer. That is um, Louis Varland. He's not pitching quite as well as he did last year, but everything is looking pretty good for him um, facing double a hitters. I think he's where he needs to be, but he's getting challenged a bit more this year than last year. Um, Cole Sands, you know, speaking of challenges, he got moved up to, well, he was on the twins briefly, uh, but he's moved up to triple a and has got knocked around quite a bit, uh, but still some encouraging things to see out of him. And I think again, he's being pushed. Um, and tested a little bit right now, which is actually good. And I would say the same thing with Ronnie Henriquez, even more so. Uh, and Henriquez is a pretty young guy. His numbers with the Saints look pretty bad, but I think just having him in AAA is, is a pretty decent test uh, for him, considering his age, his experience. I mean, it's not like he mastered AA with Texas. Um, you know, he's the guy that came over in the Mitch Garver trade um, last year. I showed last night he was throwing 97. He was topping out at. Um, just inconsistent throughout his outings, you know, so may hopefully he irons that out. Um, I expect a lot more people will have him lower than this. Um, and again, I think that's reasonable too. I think this whole tier, um, and again, that's why I did tiers is to show you kind of how I view these guys. These are all really close, you know, very, very close this whole tier for me. Um, but I do think this next step up is quite a bit. Uh, there is a pretty big gap between this 11 to 17 from this six to 10 range. Um, and you see some of the guys that really have gotten some steam, as are you're going to start to see here as we kind of see preview the top, t the next tier above this. Some names that probably will uh, be a bit of a surprise. But Marco Raya, um, you know, re very, very impressive. You know, coming into this year, knew really knew very little about him because he hadn't pitched um, at the minor league level. You know, basically just knew what from his draft when he was drafted in 2020 in the fourth round. And then kind of what we've heard in the background, what we've heard that he did at instructionals. I'm comfortable pushing Raya all the way into my top 10 uh, as a 19-year-old in low A for Fort Myers, really pitching well. Cade Povich is re looking really good. His overall numbers aren't as eye-popping, Cade Povich, for Cedar Rapids. But again, this is his first um, full season in organized uh, pro ball. Um, and he, you know, he's a draftee from last year in the third round. And I think he's looked really good. His stuff looks great. Uh, Jordan Balazovic, you know, his stuff looks great most of the time, but his he's really not performing. I, I think his overall performance last year didn't really live up to his potential, and we're seeing that, you know, tenfold this year. He's really been knocked around at AAA. Um, so he's up against it right now. But I still think, you know, if you were to ask me, like, who's the most likely guy in the minor leagues right now, who could develop into a top of the rotation starter. I think Balazovic probably is still the guy 
And we're not seeing that right now. And there's enough question marks around him. You know, it's a risk versus floor. And I think or a ceiling versus floor. I think he has a very high ceiling, but I think his floor is a lot lower than some of these other guys I've moved ahead of him now. You see, I've moved uh, Balzavic back three. And that's even with some of those prospect graduations. And then Matt Cantorino and Simeon Woods Richardson holding steady. Um, if you were to kind of guarantee me that Matt Cantorino was going to make it as a starting pitcher, I might have him, gosh, as high as second uh, in the system. I think, you know, it's possible. I'm, I'm happy they're still working him in in the rotation in double A, but I think more than likely he's going to end up as a reliever. Um, but this ranking sort of bakes in both his ceiling and his floor, both, you know, that he's still starting, but I think he's probably going to be a reliever. Um, again, if you were to guarantee me he would be like a traditional starter, I would have him a lot higher. I really uh, I like him a lot. He's Unfortunately, he's walking too many guys in double A, which that's not going to help either. Um, but still a guy with excellent stuff, a guy who looks just awful to hit against. Um, and it's really fun to watch too. Uh, Simeon Woods Richardson, I think, is the highest floor pitcher in this uh, system right now. I don't know that he's ever going to develop into like a top of the rotation guy or an all-star type starting pitcher, but I feel really, really good about him, you know, being maybe a three, four uh, at the very, I, I find it hard to believe that he's not going to have a career as a major league starting pitcher, which is, um, you know, there, the saying is there's no such thing as a pitching prospect. So that's really hard for me to, to say about a guy a lot of the time. Um, so I, I think that's what has elevated him actually to the top, Pitching prospect in the system for me now is Simeon Woods Richardson, again, with all those graduations, keeping that in mind. But above Balazovic, above Cantorino now, uh, but still in that same kind of tier. And some of these young guys catching up to him. And then my tier two, I do have, uh, this was a bit different because my tier one before was uh, Miranda Lewis and Martin. I, do, I really, this may be pushing these guys too hard, but I, I'm not usually the one to do that either, I feel like. You know, looking across, especially at, you know, either other lists or even internal people at Twins Daily who are also ranking. I'm usually the slow person to push down guys in the low minors. But just seeing these two guys, Emmanuel Rodriguez and Noah Miller as 19-year-olds, putting together professional plate appearances, really getting the job done on a regular basis, also showing some power in particular for Rodriguez, which isn't a surprise. Uh, but Noah Miller was so good in spring training, I gave him a Sire of Fort Myers honorable mention for how Great, he looked uh, with the Twins in spring training. And just no questions about his ability to stick at shortstop right now, which is another very strange thing for a 19-year-old. I don't know that he's going to be like a gold glove caliber guy there, uh, but very looks very good at shortstop. So I, space, I strapped a rocket onto these two guys. Um, it's been two months to seeing them producing like this in the Florida State League, which is a really difficult league to hit in. In particular, you know, Rodriguez's offensive numbers look a little bit better than Miller's, but both of them still look good, especially considering their age for the level. Um, yeah, I, this might, this may be pushing too hard. You know, I if, if you feel like this is too far too fast, uh, I feel you. But I put them up here, and honestly, I had more. I spent more time considering moving them higher than this than I did moving them down. Uh, to be honest. So I think these two guys really, you know, if you do the math here and look at where everybody is, these are going to be the top two prospects in the system before long, in my opinion. Um, and I'm very excited about these guys. And I think, you know, there's a saying, once a player has shown a skill, he owns that skill. So I think, you know, we can say both of these guys have good uh, plate approaches. They both can be patient and draw walks. Um, it's then that's again, very, very rare for guys this young. So that's probably the biggest thing about this whole update is moving these guys up seven, eight spots. As you see there, I did have them 11th and 13th in my most recent update. Um, but again, I'm very impressed with the returns on these two guys um, so far. And then Austin Martin, I did keep at number three, but again, this is a four tier uh, four player tier. And I did consider moving one of, or both of these guys above him and even Miranda, um, you know, I don't, I, again, I've, I've been saying it all along. Austin Martin is not a shortstop. Um, that sort of hurts his value in my eyes. He's not hit for power again. So I kind of continue to be low on Martin comparatively speaking, but I still think he's a really fun player. I think he has a, a very high floor. Um, 
but I just don't see him as like, you know, I think he, he was a consensus top 30 prospect at one point uh, in all of baseball. And I just don't see that in him. Um, not to say that it's not there. Maybe he hits for more power eventually, but um, I just think it's becoming less likely. And then I did flip flop Royce and Miranda. I did have Jose Miranda number one and Royce Lewis number two. Uh, not only flipped them, but also Royce is in his own tier. That's how kind of how far that that's gone. Um, and it's not that I was, you know, having Royce at number two, and I had him number one all the way until now. Even when Alex Kirilov really popped, and a lot of people put Kirilov above Lewis, I still held out out on Lewis and kept him number one. Um, I never really gave up on Royce, but there was enough questions to lower him a bit, you know, having not played in so long. And there was always things that I was more believing in, but we hadn't really, he hadn't proved it yet. And now he has. Like, I always believed he could stay at shortstop, and, man, he has been incredible there this year. There's no questioning that he can play shortstop at the major league level. Obviously, if we're talking about the Twins right now, um, that chance isn't there. But he can play, you know, he's a good enough athlete. If you can play shortstop, you're a good enough athlete to probably cover just about anywhere. And then also the biggest question from offensively was just his swing. His, you know, and even though I held out hope, my whole my tagline in Russ was basically this won't be the swing that he has by the time he gets to the major leagues. He will be taught the lesson in the minors eventually that that swing doesn't work. And I think um, in 2019, you know, I, I think he'd been shown enough at that point. And now we're seeing he does. He, he it's not like he never breaks out that leg kick, but we have barely seen it. Um, every once in a while you see it, but it's more of a toe tap or a smaller stride. He just is way more under control. Um, and he's just a bigger guy. So he doesn't need all that power when he was 19, 20 years old, he might've needed that big leg kick and really getting all of his body into it to make, to produce that kind of power. You know, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger and he just doesn't need that anymore. So, um, it's, that's just been beyond the performance. Obviously he has also played very well both with the saints and in his brief time with the twins, he's played very well, but really outside of that, from projecting him out, those are the two big, big question marks to the he's answered. He can play shortstop and he fixes his swing. So really there is no, he's every bit as good or every, you, you can project him to be every bit as good as you would have hoped, you know, had he not lost a season due to the pandemic, had he not lost a season due to ACL and uh, you go, I should update this. I, got the news this morning um, that he was he's up and Miranda's down and I think that's where these guys should be um, I said it at the time that Royce got sent down that I supported that idea of having him get his feet wet at some more positions because he hasn't played he hadn't played anything but shortstop since 2019 um, and then come back up you know that it shouldn't have been a, a long period uh, just get him some looks out there get him used to the, seeing the ball out in those positions feel you know communicating with other fielders in different ways than he would as a shortstop. Um, so I'm happy to see he's back. Um, and then Miranda, he, you know, he's where he should be now as well. I think getting him up at the major league level is going to be very important and helpful for him. Um, he looked a little bit different. He looked a little bit different than he has in the minors. I think he was uh, not quite himself, but at the same time, over the last two weeks, um, he has been looking a little better for the Twins and was hitting right around league average for this season, you know, which has been a bit, the offense has been very down. So it's not like he's been lighting it up, uh, but playing better over the last two weeks, which I think is positive. Um, you know, have him kind of end his time on the Twins on a positive note. He's going to get to go back down to AAA with a lot of lessons learned, a lot of things that he knows he needs to work on now, uh, but not have it be such a such a disaster of a of, of a run with the twins. You know, he can he can feel like he was starting to put some things together and learn some stuff. But knowing that now now he may have wondered before. Now he knows. You know, he got a taste and it wasn't good enough. So yeah, that should motivate him and also give him an idea of the things that he needs to work on. So um, I'm very happy with both of how the things have gone in terms of that. Uh, contributing to the big club for Miranda and Lewis have gone and very happy that they're both, I think where they need to be right now. So again, that was the list. I'll kind of run through, scroll through again, one more time. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to field those in the chat. Thanks for checking this out. We'll talk again soon.